Hello everyone, let's talk about the uh, second type of DNA binding domains which is known as helix loop helix DNA binding proteins. Uh, we have previously uh, talked about the uh, helix term helix DNA binding proteins and uh, uh, this is pretty identical with some uh, difference in the structure that's why we call it helix loop helix DNA binding uh, proteins. So these are the proteins which have uh, this specific a DNA binding domain which consists of two alpha helices which are connected to each other via a short strand of uh, via short rather short loop of amino acids. So the main difference between a helix turn helix motifs and uh, helix loop helix motifs is that uh, in case of helix turn helix motifs the two alpha helices were connected to each other by a short strand of uh, amino acids and this short strand is not uh, made into a loop while in case of um, helix loop helix DNA binding proteins the two alpha helices this is one alpha helix and this is the second alpha helix these two alpha helices are connected to each other via, via a short loop of amino acids so uh, one of these two alpha helices uh, for example this one at the N uh, terminal uh, so the the end terminal uh, alpha helix for example is is the one which recognizes uh, and 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 binds to the dna which this recognizes a specific uh, dna sequence and uh, uh, the the uh, the other helix um, is utilized for dimerization with another monomer so basically these uh, proteins generally they exist in dimers the same is true for uh, uh, leucine zipper motifs as well so this is also identical to or very similar to basic uh, zipper motifs uh, with the exception of this uh, loop which is not uh, found in the uh, zipper motifs so this one alpha helix and this is the second alpha helix if you talk about only this monomer the one indicated the, the one represented in uh, blue here so uh, this is a short loop which can act uh, a short alpha helix with a longer alpha helix and uh, this blue monomer then dimerizes with the with, with, with this green monomer and one of these two um, like one of these two helices uh, it, it recognizes the DNA binding domain uh, so this could be an M terminal uh, alpha helix or a C terminal alpha helix depending upon the type of the protein involved so in both the cases one helix is recognizing the uh, the DNA uh, a specific sequence of the DNA and the second helix is going to dimerize with another monomer so uh, uh, as we have just discussed uh, that uh, these helix loops helix DNA binding proteins they consist of two alpha helices connected to each other via a short strand of uh, via a short loop of amino acids and this is a non helical structure it means it is not uh, made up of, a, of an alpha helix this is one helix and this is the second helix so the second the, the uh, C terminal helix in this particular example for example it, in this particular case is a sh shorter one and uh, we have a longer alpha helix so one longer alpha helix is connected via this loop to a shorter alpha helix so the longer alpha helix has uh, it's a bit flexible so because of the presence of uh, uh, this basic amino acid residues uh, in its DNA binding domain so the basic uh, uh, amino acids uh, the, the amino acids with basic side chains generally include uh, histidine lysine and arginine so the number of these uh, basic amino acids is uh, higher in this region uh, of the helix as compared to the other region of the helix so which makes it more flexible and this is the region that is going to recognize and bind to the DNA while the other region the non-flexible uh, region uh, this region is utilized to uh, dimerize with the other uh, monomers uh, so uh, both the helix loop helix uh, proteins and leucine zipper proteins they have the tendency to uh, make up these uh, dimers and these dimers can be of two types they can be homodimers or they can be heterodimers so if this is a homodimer then both the 
monomers would be identical to each other. And if this is a heterodimer, then one monomer would be different uh, than the other uh, uh, monomer. So if you switch back to the previous slide, uh, this is an example, both of them basically are examples of heterodimers. Uh, sorry, both of them are examples of heterodimers. Uh, for example, this is, a, this is one monomer uh, shown in uh, blue and this is the second monomer with it, which is shown in uh, green. So the uh, good thing about the heterodimers is that uh, this facilitates the uh, different proteins to bind to uh, a larger repertoire of DNA sequences uh, because one uh, because one monomer can, can recognize one particular uh, DNA sequence while the second monomer can recognize another sequence. So the uh, so this uh, protein can bind to uh, to different uh, DNA regions uh, because of the presence of these uh, uh, dimers, but uh, a lot of these proteins um, do not have these basic residues uh, in their uh, in their DNA binding domain. So, uh, because of the absence of these basic residues, uh, they are uh, either unable to bind to the DNA or they have very weak interaction with the DNA. Uh, these monomers, for example, but uh, in order to bind to the DNA, then they are dependent on another. Uh, they're dependent on another monomer, which helps them recognize the uh, recognize the specific uh, DNA sequence. Uh, what else is possible is uh, if you have one monomer uh, which is uh, capable of uh, uh, binding to the DNA, this has uh, got a DNA binding domain and has got basic residues in it and it can recognize and bind to the DNA, but there's another uh, monomer which does not have a DNA binding domain, so the binding of which, which does not have these basic residues here, so it is unable to bind to the DNA. So the binding of this uh, amino acid, uh, sorry, the binding of this monomer can also inactivate this normal or the longer DNA binding domain containing monomer. So uh, it can work both ways. They can either get uh, activated by dimerization or they can also get inactivated uh, via dimerization. So uh, uh, both of these two things are possible. Um, and another thing that these, uh, uh, as we have discussed that they're capable of uh, forming both homodimers as well as heterodimers. So basically this dimerization also controls the uh, the the the, transcri the transcriptional activity of uh, lots of different uh, transcription factors with uh, such domains. Uh, so generally, one among the two uh, monomers um, is 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 uh, has a constitutive uh, expression, while the second one has a variable expression. So the 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 the, uh, the activation. Uh, or the activity of the transcription factor of this particular or of this particular protein can be controlled uh, by the variable expression of uh, uh, one monomer. Uh, for example, if this uh, uh, protein, which contains this uh, helix loop helix DNA binding domain, uh, if this protein has got this uh, monomer which has a constitutive uh, expression or a constant expression, while the expression of the other monomer can be controlled. This is variable expression. Means it, this can be upregulated or this can be downregulated. So whenever this monomer is downregulated, then this is not available inside the uh, cell in order to um, dimerize with the other monomer. So if dimerization does not take place, then the transcription factor or the protein may not be able to bind to its specific DNA sequence. And if you can upregulate the um, uh, the other monomer, this monomer, then plenty of this monomer would be available for dimerization with this monomer and uh, this can help the protein bind to its uh, specific DNA sequence. So I think that's uh, pretty much for today. Thank you very much. I hope you understand uh, you got everything. We will discuss uh, some other details about the transcription factors in the coming lectures. Thank you very much for your attention.